right up at the top there. Man, good crisp whack. Look at that beautiful chunky fish. But it was a nice crisp whack. Thank you. You're awesome. And this is totally still water. As it's almost done being winter, they will push into that super still water as high up in the water, uh, in that winter water as they can. Stout! You are that's, that's fat! A fish, dude, huh? It's a gorgeous fish. Let's see. Yeah, you're into four. You're, you're not the same class. Can you settle down? I'll let you go. You've got this monstrosity back here. Yes. I don't know how, I have not yet tested how that's gonna work. This is fascinating, man. I mean, right now it's picking up. He's as big as I've caught in a while. I believe this is as big as I've caught all winter long. 20, 20 and a half? 20 and three quarter, four pound, 11 ounce. All right, we'll get this picture and then release this guy. Fat, angry, wanted that spinnerbait. Spinnerbait fish. Spinnerbait fish. Very cool. Good eddy. You got some, some big fish in there. What a wonderful time of year to be on the river. These fish are waking up. Yes. Hey folks, getting ready to launch here on the Juniata River. Uh, it's up a little bit, and this is actually a section I've never uh, winter or early spring fish, so this is gonna kind of be, um, I don't know. A little bit of exploration for me, believe it or not. I know I've floated through here in summer, but uh, different time of year. But I'm getting ready to launch. I run into Andrew here. Andrew is with Aluma Rider. Yeah, Aluma Rider Boats. We're out of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. And what we're standing in front of here is our 1966 nozzle outboard jet. Um, we got a half inch UHMW bottom, half inch UHMW sides, 3 16 bottom. Uh, ton of structure on the inside of the boat. Uh, Brad has a great, great video on our YouTube channel describing how the nozzle and the acceptor plate works. Actually, our Facebook channel. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, so on Facebook is just Aluma Rider Boats? Yeah, Aluma Rider Boats on Facebook. Uh, our website, alumariderboats.com. And if you want to schedule a test ride or anything to see all about the nozzle, uh, you can send us an email at sales at alumarider.com. Cool. Uh, 200 horsepower Mercury power in this beast. You can upgrade to a 250 or a 300 if you would like, but uh, that's a quick little, quick little rundown on the 1966. Very cool. Nice rig. So I don't know. I I do a lot. Of, I've done a lot of pro, prototype testing when I work for Torquedo, yeah. usually on Lake Marburg, and uh, it's just cool to run into someone else has a job, you know, running boats and yeah. some some things that uh, aren't quite out yet and yeah it's, it's, it's released to... we it's released so we have our nozzle and everything that that video on facebook will go over all of that we're making some little bit of tweaks and learning and making everything better so uh checking uh, performance checking performance that's right awesome but hey good running into you man nice meeting you yeah very cool rig let's go catch some junior out of smallmouth so starting with the uh big blade on this current seam here, nice looking log. I really don't know water temp. Um, for early March, I don't know. 
maybe low 40s, upper 30s. I'm not really sure yet. I don't know that I necessarily need to know. Just, just that it's cold and I should probably do this retrieve a little slower. So I got one of these football swing jigs that I made. There's a tackle crafting video on this, but basically looks like a regular football hair jig, but the hook in the back can kind of kick side to side. It doesn't kick side to side totally freely. Uh, I put a little piece of oxygen tubing in there to keep it somewhat rigid in, in the position I leave it. So this is my first, first try getting this out. I gotta put some smelly jelly in it and uh, put it on this current seam. But it's a half ounce, so I'm gonna try it a little bit closer to the current seam. Good weight for that. Let's give it a go. So I really built this jig with reservoir fishing in mind not river fishing. Um, half ounce is pretty heavy for the river, which is a very snaggy environment. And I don't know how long I'm going to throwing something this heavy. I put it right on that current seam in hopes that uh, a real aggressive fish was there. So these sorts of Scrub islands are really great in the in the springtime. I don't know if this one's associated with any sort of winter habitat, but we'll kind of zip through here. There's a lot more further down. This might be a little dicey. But this is what I refer to as scrub islands. out of this part of it. Lots of nice hiding places for them. That's a nice looking calm spot on that thing. I just I don't feel easy about getting to it. Probably have my panel out just in case. A nice looking spot. Still got a lot of a lot of turbulence. I think if there's a fish in here, it's pretty aggressively looking for somewhere to eat. This is hard, even at the back of this eddy. This is hard for me to hold in. I'm gonna drop back a little bit, see what I find. mentioned that I made those, those swing jigs for fishing uh, the reservoir and I just didn't quite feel right throwing it in the river. I did switch back to the favorite lighter jig, more compact profile. Man, this one's got some weight to it for sure, but it was a nice crisp whack thank you you're awesome I'm gonna let you breathe a minute all right solid solid fish yeah about three pounds six ounce not quite three and a half all right three six right at 18 inches pretty deep bodied fish here hitting the hitting the finesse jig we're gonna go ahead and give us some GoPro dome look
So, Scrub Islands, they're woody. I mean, it's, it's just a jumble of wood. Trees on little islands that catches more wood and just becomes a big old log jam. And, you know, they are uh, they're fish magnets for sure, especially when the current's up like it is. Um, great place to target them in the early spring but they're snaggy and you gotta have something with a bristle guard so that definitely helps man that hit me felt good very very crisp pow that's what we like same eddie oh feels good strong fish be landing this guy on the side where you can see him. So I just gotta get him in. There he is. Another crisp hit. I say that and now look at that. Look where I got him. I don't know how that happens when I feel a good hit and he's hooked on the there. I mean, it felt just like it. Section just. Oof. Okay. So I guess 16. 16 inch. So, different part of the same eddy. And um, I am letting them sit. Like, I will say it's important when you put it in to like move it some so that you feel that, yep, I'm on a hard bottom. In dragging that head some on a hard bottom, it goes crunch, crunch, crunch going across it. Each of those little taps kind of tells all the fish in the area. The taps of the lead head on those rocks. Hey, there's something going on over here. Starts them moving in that direction to, to go check it out. Um, but when they're hitting it, it's, it's there and it's been there for a while. Got a nice little scrub island, Eddie. Give me two good fish here. All right, so good news. Just got off the phone with my buddy Jake and uh, he's, He's nearby. He was at a lake testing out his new hummingbird setup. He got all new electronics and uh, wanted to have it at a lake to just test out the operation and see that he likes how it was mounted. Um, be curious to see, you know, what he has to to show us here in a little bit. All right, Jake has arrived. Uh, before he launches, I want to run over there, hop out put the video camera on his electronics setup kind of learn what he's doing electronics wise to prep for his his next tournament year what what upgrades he's uh he's put on the osprey jake jeffrey new truck new electronics new electric what, what are you doing man you got I mean, a side hustle you need to let me in on? I've been I've been selling feet picks. That's what I figured. Yeah. You it's, know? It's a nice truck you got there, man. Thank you, man. It's uh it's a lot better than trailering. Yeah? Yeah. So, so you're a convert. Well that, that fast? I've always known that it was gonna be better because when you're dealing with the inconvenience of the trailer when you're traveling. Yeah. That's the biggest issue for me because we go to a lot of weird places and having a trailer and then having to put, you know, you, you having to find a parking spot, having to turn around in places. Some of the places we go to, they don't, they don't even like, they're not boat ramps. Yeah. Like we go to some shady spots yeah. and it's easy to get in and out with a truck a lot easier than it is with a trailer. I agree. Um, that being said, there are some instances where 100% there's going to be times whenever I use the trailer over the truck bed 
um, because the speed, the speed of, of just dumping it in the water is fantastic. So electronics. Yes. You got a Solix here. Yes. And you've got this monstrosity back here. Yes. I don't know how, I have not yet tested how that's going to work okay. with the torpedo motor. Get lift, man. That thing, like you, it's a, that's a tray bracket, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's 100% innovative sportsman. He innovated. Okay. So if you lift this and it kind of so I have a up. I have a pull cord yep. right up next to my right hand side. I see that it's so if I pull this cord right here, yep. I have to kind of pull it forward a little bit, but it at least gets it up. You're rubbing. Oh no, that's all that you wanted. No, no, I have this on there right now uh, to keep it in the water. Okay. So, so that's I, like a little yeah. Velcro deal. Yeah, if I, that, that'll that, kick up all the way. Yeah, that right. that's so that's like when we fish a lot of current. So I don't want this thing, you know, pushing up on me. So I'm curious if you have a shadow from this thing being next to me. We're gonna see. I know that some of the trolling motors, like when the people put them on their trolling motors, they have a shadow. But the location that I'm gonna have the shadow isn't going to matter. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because I mean you're I still have, gonna have like what. So I, well, I run, like I'm going to run this thing. Nine o'clock all the way back to about 7.30. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to run this thing basically from, from your, like, that's thing. my camera. It's, it's from like here, there. from like here forward is where I'm running this thing uh -huh. because I'm not really concerned about what's behind me. Okay. Um, and I can, I can actually take this on the Solix and I can hit side imaging yep. and I can run side imaging off of it um as well cool. so it, it automatically comes back to the center line and then does the so the side I, got, I gotta come back to like we talked about the truck yeah beautiful truck uh -huh. and then we're talking about all this high dollar electronics it's I, like you joke about the feet thing like but I, did you get a raise i didn't get a raise um i just uh i i bought all this stuff at cost um like what it what it costs online but they have they have some really smoking good deals right now hummingbird does yeah um they're running rebates on the fish finder and they're running rebates on the mega 360 and the mega live was 500 dollars off automatically so this so. is your forward facing sonar correct yeah and that's also an innovative sportsman custom job okay so it's nice well work there. Trey did this. Trey. So um, you can basically just turn it down in and then this moves inside one of the Yak Attack duo rails. Beautiful. So cool. Yeah, this is this is absurd. But I have though. I have my 12 footer <laughs> at home that has none of this on it. This is your throw and, and it's my throw and go river boat nice. so same platform same platform and i'm still i'm not going to be i'm still going to draft the same maybe a, a little bit less a little bit more but the inflatable doesn't get pushed underwater like the plastic rotomolded boats do no nope. you ought to get the better wheels on this on your landing gear just a suggestion okay you just just take a look at mine when you can Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I see I, what you're saying. I'm gonna stop recording because, like, we we've got half the episode right here just looking at your your boat and your nice new truck. Oh, all right. I was waiting on Jake and thought I'd come up here and drop the jig here and this eddy. And what do we got here? It's a big fish on a jig. Big fish on a jig. Very big fish. Oh, bigger than I usually get. Uh huh. Yeah, he's a beast. He just did not pop off. Well, hey Jake, you got a big one. 
I believe this is as big as I've caught all winter long. And this is sort of the opportunity that we get fishing in the in the uh, high water winter is uh, I'm trying to see if he'll go 20 and it's at least 20 and a half yeah he's touching 20 and three quarter and very heavy heavy fish to get you five pounder. Nope. He's a... Uh... Let's see. He's... 13. No. 11. What's... It's one less than three quarter. Yeah, he's four eleven, not five. <laughs> so close. Beautiful animal though. Man, I'm happy to catch a four eleven. Twenty and three quarter. I'm gonna let him sit a minute. Yes, that's as long as I've caught in a while um, on this on this river. So twenty and three quarter, four eleven. I did not feel that fish hit and it was right under me and that is sort of a signature of and I, I got him breathing on the boga there because um, we're gonna get some good picks um, it's sort of a signature of big fish that they'll pick something up and you got no clue that they're that they're there so um, the other fish I've caught have all been you know just pow that one was just like I got a leaf and I set the hook and he just was not coming up. So that's cool. Glad I came back to greet Jake and man, it's quite a reward. So I sort of hollered. I got a big one, but I don't think he knows really what we're looking at here. I also need to get the, I need you to be right here. I need you in the background of my um, my thumbnail. Right here? Yeah, right about there. Well, that's, that's a nice one. You know what it is? That's an adult. <laughs> it's an adult. 20, 20 and a half? 20 and three quarter, four pound, 11 ounce. All right, we'll get this picture and then release this guy. fish was caught. And we're getting blown into the trees. And I think I see it. A lot of interesting things. Besides us. <laughs> getting blown into the trees. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is fascinating, man. I mean, right now it's picking up, you know, shallow and brush. Yep. So it's really not seeing a whole lot. But, you know, when you get out in the open, on this? Um, you can, yeah. Huh. Very cool. Alright, I'm gonna come off of you being pinned in here. I appreciate you coming over and let me see it. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. Alright, uh, 
I was actually going to fish somewhere else today, and I called Jake, and he's like, yeah, I'm up here too, or he was about to be. So, I'm kind of following the lead on where he wanted to go. It's a lot of flow. It's a whole lot of flow, so should push him into pretty predictable spots. It has so far. So, I'm just hopping from Scrub Island to Scrub Island. We got a heron in this one, so they generally know where the fish are. Right, we're getting up this rapid. He's taking the uh, the outside. I'm kind of cruising up through here. But that foam looks good. I'm gonna stop and fish that for sure. It's tricky. Tricky going here. I mean, I, I think so many of these places are just ideal for spring fishing. Are they gonna push all the way up in this in winter? I don't know. I think not. As beautiful as it all looks. Alright, let's get above. I've taken this path through the trees, staying close to the shoreline. Keep the you know the paddle right here. Just in case. This is this is my security blanket. I can do a lot with it but I can't do as much with it if it's if it's tucked away. Oh, I'm shallow. I'm not going to give it a little extra push. The motor can handle this, but if it's shallow, I don't want to give it all of the motor. Yeah, it looks like Jake's found his way up. I'm close. So, even with paddling and the motor at full speed, I'm only moving 1.3 mile an hour upstream. Right, most of this has a lot of blow through, but right in the center there. And there's a little notch there. I like that little creek notch, but this is worth a shot. That wasn't it though. Yep, I like that. Deep in there. Tight, tight place to fish, but I can see there being one in there. Looks like Jake got one. Figured as soon as we got above the that rapid. Oh, nice one, man. Okay. What did uh what did that thing hit? Spitter bait. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad you got got some power fishing. Go here, hold it up again, man. Yeah. Let me get a bigger, better. Look at that thing. Sweet. Big old fat belly on her. Yep. At least 18. Yeah, for sure. In this eddy here. Yeah. So she was. She was right in the. I can't wait till you watch watch this. She was right in the in the little corner in the in the in that like nook there. Yeah. So when she hit, when yeah. She hit Jeff. She she ripped the rod out of my hands and it was like this. Yeah. And I had to grab my rod like this. Oh man. Crazy. She was not shy about it. All right. I'm glad you. Pop the cork, man, with a yeah, spinner bait. Power fishing, Jake. Good job, man. This is on the bank transition. I kind of saw from a distance. And, uh, nice little fish. Mm. Good foam, just kind of settling here. 
So transitions in the bank topography are important. Uh, this whole bank with that, that uh, railroad bed up there, really steep, but that 15 incher was right here in this hole, and it's a pretty big area of calm water. But as we start moving upstream, you see all of a sudden we have a riv river bottom again. And uh, this is, I mean, that, that feature, the, you know, transition from no river bottom to river bottom uh, certainly means something. And I think this is probably a place that a bunch of them winter. Uh, that fish was in the middle of that eddy. Not pushed up to the top like the bigger ones I've caught earlier. Um, it's been, you know, deadest water all the way up at the top. This one was right in the middle, so look at this foam. Look at this swirly, swirly junk here. It's all kind of collecting in here. Get him, Jake. Same place as the 15. I bet there's a pile of them in here. Probably another 15. So sometimes the thought of doing the Sharpie uh, illustrations doesn't come to me until I'm editing, and that's the case here, because I don't know that what I filmed really showed the topographical <clears throat> change in the bank really, really meant in terms of where there was a concentration of fish in the winter. Um, I feel like that spot... <clears throat> That little corner where it transitioned from a really steep bank to having a having a river bottom kind of spread out and having less of a steep bank really did something for the flow that created a little pocket off to the side with some deep water um, to to hold a lot of fish in the winter. Now those there was a concentration of I'm gonna say small but mid-sized fish right in that corner. As we moved upstream, which you're about to see, um, we see a lot of fish that pushed up. We also caught, Jake caught that nice 18 incher right at the beginning. I catch a really big fish at the end of the day there, um, which is just a little bit downstream. And that's what they do in winter. They, they have their, their winter holes, and right before it's about to bust loose, they have this exodus where they, they run upstream and downstream. But first, I need you to understand the, the topogra topographical um, feature that we had there that made that spot a really good winter hole. This band right here is the river. I have these different colored uh, Sharpie markers uh, that I'm gonna use to really designate slow water. Still slow, but maybe turbulent. And in the green is really fast water. So it's the transition from green to red is your speed. Green being fast, red being stopped. Um, but just overall, this this being the river, and this was the little notch where I got that first 15, and we'll catch some others out of there. Um, <clears throat> I drew the, I mean, this black line is the, is the bank, and um, I drew the topographical lines of the land. When they're stacked real close like this, that's the steep bank. When they start kind of spreading out like that, that shows a flat river bottom. And the transition between the two has an interesting uh, feature right there in terms of depth and slow water. That is a winter spot. And of course up at the top, this is your railroad uh, bridge that, or railroad <clears throat> bed that is why you have such a steep, um, you know, steep bank there. Um, all right, let me start using these and kind of fill in our different current speeds. But understand that this is deep water this is also deep water, but this is deep water moving fast, and this is deep water that's slow, and there's some really interesting things that we're gonna see up here in a couple minutes. All right, for sure the, the overall um, 
direction of the flow is this way and out here in the middle this is all really fast right a whole area super fast screaming quick water right all the way out here um, I actually used <laughs> coming back down through there with my motor at full speed I hit double digit speeds with the Torquedo so fast 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 especially that flow um, you get into this area here and it's it's starting to slow down there's there's a couple like this is where you start seeing a lot of the, the turbulence right you, you you I mean yellow in this case is almost like the most dominant current seam there is um, as you get closer to the bank it's it's slowing down a little bit here um, but right up against this bank where it's steep there's no stopped water it's just a little bit slower right and there's you know some stuff that kind of pushes in there a little bit here and there um, but it's it's you know it, it pinches it off close here um, but you know this is water that just sort of billows in let me kind of Let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. In specifically on this this little notch here, you have water that's just stopped. This whole big pocket here is stopped. It's a little bit there, and and moving upstream, there's there's more pockets. But this is the biggest, like totally stopped. Still water, and it's it's really formed because it's deep all the way through here with this this steep bank, but then it transitions to where this land kind of has a little bit of of um, it, it's just not as steep a bank, and that corner pocket is formed by that transition from steep bank to an actual river bottom. So great winter hole type feature right there. All right, I've kind of filled in the colors a little bit more. What we have here is our winter hole, and this is totally still water. As it's almost done being winter, they will push into that super still water as high up in the water, uh, in that winter water as they can. They're also gonna drop down if there's some some really calm pockets. That's where we got the, uh, Jake got his first 18 incher and I get to catch a big one later in the day there. Um, you know, they make this exodus. They, you know, have been here all winter and then as the days get longer and the water starts getting warmer with successive warm rains, they spread out from here. And the connected water, and this, this really is connected with totally still water. There's a spot up here that I'm about to just totally crush them. And we leave this area and then we come back and I come back to this, you know, top of the winter pool um, all the way up. That is such a critical spot you know, right at the end of the winter period, at the beginning of the spring period. And then, like a light switch, they all leave this area. Yeah, you're still going to catch some 13, 14, 12 inches here. Maybe you get a 16 that's lingering, but like all these 18, 19s and 20s that have been here all winter, they leave this area and they find spawning habitat. So, but understand the winter exodus from these these concentrations of fish in the winter when when this river freezes over, um, they move to the heads and the tails of this totally still water right before they just leave it all in search of spawning habitat. Right. I don't know if you'll see this, but you know, this is that, that river bottom transition. It's, it's steep bank right behind me. Oh look, there's a turtle waking up. Yep. That is a sign of the end of winter for sure. All right, what I wanted to show you is if you move up, look at the haze 
just the scum that's on this surface. Hopefully that's showing up more than just that, that stone fly scooting along. Um, it's a big eddy and it's, it is in the same area as this return to having a, uh, a river bottom transition. So for sure a big winter, wintering area. And, and I've never seen this. I just know yeah, I got two in the same spot towards the end of it. I'm going to run all the way up to the top of it. And uh, Jake and I can kind of meet in the middle. But I'm excited always to fish the top of what I identify as a winter hole in, uh, in early March. Because, you know, they, they typically get restless and want to get going. And... They push to the heads and to the tails of winter holes. And then, usually after very warm rain in, in the early spring, they move out. And I don't mean all of them, but they move out in pretty good numbers. And they spread out in some of the places that I saw coming up through that, that big ledge drop um, that I looked at and said, that's where they should be in early spring. It is not early spring, it's still winter. Um, they're gonna go to places like that. Smaller, individual little pockets of, of, you know, being protected from the current. But yeah, this, uh, that haze continues up for, it's really seeds, sycamore tree seeds and water bottles and stone flies and just, scum. Back towards the top of this whole complex. Uh, it's a pretty dark fish. Gotcha. Oh, the jig came out. Alright, let's look at these. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Measure and get back up in there and keep keep dropping the jig and the foam. Oop, I'm without. I pulled my battery. Pulled my kill switch off. Looks like he's 17 and a quarter. Yep, nice fish. 17 and a quarter. A lot of foam here. We get up above this little tree sticking out. And uh, the fish was somewhere in here. There's a lot of them in one spot. But all the way up is a great oh, placed fish. That one really pulled hard there for a second. Hmm. You're strong. Oh, you're big, big, big. Very big. Ooh. Yes. Fat. Look how fat this guy is. Alright. Look at that monster. Just just barely inside that mouth. We're gonna get a weight on this one. I don't know how long this fish is, but it's just stout. That's, you are that's fat. A fish, dude, huh? It's a gorgeous fish. It's a. Uh, it's 18 and three quarters, but it's. It, it might be in the same same class as that 20 and 3 quarter. Like, I think this is mid fours. I think the 20 and 3 quarter weighed more. But this one is amazing. Let's see. Yeah, you're into four. You're, you're not the same class. Can you settle down? I'll let you go. I promise. Hey, you're about 4'2". Four, four pound... Four pound, two ounce, 18 and three quarter. We're getting some chunks. Chunka, chunka, chunks. 
Look at that sore on its belly. Hmm. Fishing's been good, but can't forget to eat peanut butter and Nutella. Yeah. So when you're fishing these these eddies and they got like scum and little bits of debris, that stuff. Yeah, you focus on what the bottom feels like. What the hard jig head sitting on bottom feels like. And you wait for that interruption in that feeling for, you know, to know, all right, that's, that is in a fish's mouth. You, you gotta, you gotta really focus. But even if you do, you miss them. You snooze on some hits. And I just snoozed on one hard. Like, I was feeling things happening. And I'm like, yep, that's another branch. And then I feel them spit it out. I'm like, no. Oh. Swirling branches on this current seam. Can fool you. Muddle the, the focus. That's why I get doubled anchored though. Like getting fully stopped, which I am. I mean, I'm still swinging because this is a deep eddy, but it makes a big difference. Don't be snagged. All right. Get your rod tip high. And up, 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 up. Up, 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 up. That high stick jiggle isn't going to do it this time. All right, I just pulled that out. No, that didn't, that didn't bend the hook. Sometimes the, the fine wire hook bends out when it's in wood, and that's kind of what you want, because you get your jig back right away. God, I can't believe I missed that one. So all the delightful, bright sunshine we had earlier in the day is gone. And uh, we've moved up. Jake wanted to catch, he wanted to come up to this area and look at this area. And uh, we made a long run. I didn't really like leaving where we were. You know, that, that's a winter hole for sure. And they're, they're still in it. I didn't want to leave them. I, I would have been happy just, hey, let's just keep, you know, running up that bank and then go to the bottom and run up it. We're gonna hit it again before we leave, but it's hard to leave that, all that activity. All right, I left Jake up there to explore what he, he wanted to explore. Um, I really wanna get back to where that concentration of fish was. back down to one of the more productive spots along, along here and uh, right away. with a, I think a 16 inch anchor. This guy 
puts me well over. Oh man, yeah. Another 18 and three quarter. Almost three inch upgrade. I think I'm closing in on 95 inches. All right, let's let this beautiful spotted fish go back in. See ya. So, this particular little area has been super productive. On the first and second pass, looks like Jake has caught up. And uh, so, we got this kind of log jam that starts the eddy and it kind of moves down this way. And we just got these flooded trees right here. And it kind of pinches off with that piece of wood. So there's swift current there. This is the last little bit of really calm water. And they've all been right in here. Did you do anything up there? Um, I caught one in the creek mouth. It was like 18. And then I just got another one that was about 17. Nice. Way down. Oh, Jake. Jake has a oh big fish. Nice. Not as big as I thought, but fat, angry, wanted that spinner bait. Spinner bait fish. Spinner bait fish. Very cool. Look how dark this one is. He came up really dark. Look how black he is. Gosh. I was lost a little bit of how dark he was, but he was jet black when he came rocketing up. He liked that black jig for sure. So many good fish. They are fired up! 18 and a... You gonna go half? Nope. 18 and a quarter incher. See ya. Okay, I have <clears throat> thoroughly crashed this spot. Um, <clears throat> went in after the jig. Uh, the bite. I, I just think I caught them all. I really did. There's other fish in here but we're gonna take a much closer look at that spot once I'm done snapping rods. <clears throat> the concept is though, you're, you know, when they're, when they're active and they're chewing, you find, you know, the, the big area that they're in and you move all the way to the top and you find the stillest water because this water is still cold. I mean, if you look up this way, it's still moving. Even, even in close, there's current there. When you come back to this little spot, it's really this line of trees, but it really starts in the sweetest of the sweet spot. And it's pretty deep. It's right in here. Look at the foam in there. Really not moving much at all. And it's the top of, I know this, this wood is in the way, but look at what's, what's behind it. It's the beginning of a long stretch of really still foam. They're up at the head, head of the class. I gotta stop moving to show you. It's hard to do. That's the sweet spot right there. There we go. 
big head. Big big head. Oh gosh. We just did it. Mm. All right. Oh, thanks a lot. You're good. You're good. I'm. I got no magnet on. Huh? I did not have the magnet on. He was, he was good. He was good. What a wonderful time of year to be on the river. Yes. 19 and yep 19 and a half nope he's 19 and a quarter very nice fish so that's how long it takes to let it sit we got the cast all the way down to the hit with that one 19 and a quarter inch junior out of smallmouth it's been a great day see ya Hey Jake, wasn't that the eddy that you got your, your first 18 coming up through here? Yep, same spot, right? Yeah. Is that nice. where you caught it right there? Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. It's a good eddy. You got some some big fish in there. On a crankbait. Nice job, man. All right, let's take a look at this. So, steep bank was the first thing you notice, right? And this is caused by a tree that fell in that other things have caught up on, and the current is pretty swift out here. But that, I want to put the jig in there, it tucked way up in there. And uh, it tumbled maybe twice, and then it just came to rest pretty much dead center of there. There's some good water back here, too. Um, it's a little swirly, but the center mass of the calmest part of that is right in there. fishing and I think these fish are waking up. Yes. All right, we're back at the launch and uh, I think Jake and I are going to go grab a bite to eat. Good day on the water. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Um, I had a lot of fun. What's today? Today is the, the fourth. fourth of March. The fourth. May the 4th, you know, it's March. It's not May the 4th be with you. Well, you get the Star Wars thing going on. I got the, the Storm Trooper truck right here. Storm Trooper <laughs> truck? <laughs> it is. Look at that thing. I see it. I can. I see the reference. Yep. So, I think, like, we had a warmer than average winter. And they were chewing, like, it... I don't want to say this wasn't real winter fishing, but it was easier. It was if, not. Today was not winter fishing. No, man. Because I don't winter fish. It popped early. <laughs> it popped early. And and it can just go right back into, like, we could, two weeks from now, yeah. get, get I mean, eight they, inches they can, of snow. They can absolutely get knocked back, um, without a doubt. But they're acting um, but like... They're, well, I mean, I was, I was catching them on a spinnerbait. <laughs> And a chatter bait and a crank bait today, and I, mean, I know you were catching a lot of fish on a jig, but that's not winter time. They're they're people. They're, people catch them on cranks all winter. 
True, but, but, but they're pre pre spawn. Right I now. don't. I do jigs and jerk baits sometimes. Yeah. Occasionally, I throw the big blade. I threw the big blade today and didn't work. You threw the regular one, it did. Correct. So, I don't know. I feel like they're climate pre, change. They're pre pre spawn right now. I, I, but I think we're getting spring fishing earlier each yeah, year. I'm and, okay with that. And too. I also think that. The same thing happens in the bay because our big striper have like people are people have been catching them right usually that's like third week of march so i do have some filming to do with jameson riding in a little more than two weeks we're going to do some striper stuff for the road trip angler if you haven't watched that stuff just watch it on youtube but he has it on valley sports network but he's coming up and he's like can you can you get us to where some good striper are? I'm like, yeah. I, I feel can. like at least one day has to be smallmouth. That's what I told him. Like, you want to come to the Chesapeake, you 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 can't skip like the main tributary right. of the Chesapeake. Yeah, Jameson, if you're watching this, don't don't do that. He's don't a smallmouth guy. I know he's a smallmouth guy. But he's guy. he's got priorities. Like he he needs the species diversity and and to catch a you know 48 inch striped bass is pretty fantastic. And and now's when we can do it. Anyways, the fishing today was good. Your rig is amazing. I like it. I like the way it turned out. <laughs> it's really cool. I mean, the reality is none of this is possible without Trey Leach. Yeah. Right? I mean... Is this a lock? It is a lock. It's not currently locked, but it is a lock. That's cool. I think I have the older version of this. It has like a steel cable in there. Yeah, there's something in there. It, this one's made by um, Yakima. Okay. No affiliation, no sponsorship or whatever, but this one's a Yakima one. I know there's a couple guys that have them that are made by Canoe Locks. Yeah. I think it's that like might be what I've had. C A N U L O C K S. Yep. So. Anyways, I had fun today, man. Yes. I feel like we're getting spring early, and uh, if you know you're waiting for it to be spring. Well, I mean, just here's go the thing. Get, it, you, get your dry suit and go. You know, just stay off the river because there's no fish to be caught right now. <laughs> um, you know, there's pointless to come out here and frustrate yourself. He's lying. And uh, you He's know, just liar. it's probably best if everybody Fibber. just stayed inside until May. These pants are on fire. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you guys. See you.